The techniques presented in this video are only a suggestion. They're not the only way of making something in Nuke. Compositing in a node-based software is very flexible, so there are always several ways of making the same result. If you don't like my techniques and you think they are incorrect, well, they're not. They're just another way of doing the same thing. Hello everyone, my name is Zugera from Hugo's Desk. Now this is episode 2 to my brand new video series called You Just Have To Be Better. Yes, better. You know, when you're not that good, but you just should be better. So every week I will present a tutorial for visual effects in around 5 minutes. Around 5 minutes, you say? Well, I am quite tired of very long tutorials. And it's not like you can't watch the video again. You could watch the video again if you want. Let's get on with it, shall we? Episode 2, you just have to be better at using a position pass in Nuke. Timer starts now. Here we have uh, the files that uh, we're going to use today. This is the final render, is a shot from the Just Cause 3 game cinematic I did last year. It's uh, shot 40, which is a car uh, flying through a lot of fire. Now, uh, fundamentally for this shot, I am going to show you how to use the position pass to basically, you know, layer some fire elements and certain things. Uh, we're not going to put the fire elements in this shot uh, on this tutorial because it's only a five minute tutorial but we are going to show you how to set up correctly the position pass. For the position pass, you do not, not mandatory, but you should have a normal pass. That should be uh, one of the things you should have. Uh, and you definitely need a position pass. Now, if you don't know what a position pass is, uh, then let me just uh, go ahead and Google that for you. Okay, so now that you know what a position pass is, let's just get on with it again. One thing that is important for you to know is that for this to work, you need a camera, and the camera needs to be a, a correct camera for the shot that you're working on. And also the position pass and the normals pass should be 32-bit float. Now, from that moment on, you just have to open up the position to points node. Now, the position to points node has, as you can see, one input. It only has one input until you pipe something into it. The first thing you need to pipe into that first input is the beauty or the render. Then as soon as you put one input on, you'll see that the second input will show up. The second one is called pose, which is for position pass. Uh, and then the third one will show up, which is for normals pass. And then you hook up that into the normals. As soon as you do that, you'll see that the position to points node will now generate a point cloud in the 3D system. Now, this point cloud will be an accurate representation of where the elements in CG are. So this means that this point cloud will actually be to scale and it will match exactly the scene done on a 3D application. In this case, this was done in Maya. So you have a one to one representation of where the geometry is. Now, the intuit to this node, not only it's for doing relighting, which we will talk about that next week, but the main aspect of this is to, you know, put 2D elements like fire elements and smoke elements and any kind of 2D elements that you want to add into your shot. Now, it's also also good for you to put a scanline render and a scene in the camera. Now, as soon as you hook up the camera to the scanline into the scene, you'll see that now the camera lines up. And that's what the position pass is. The position pass is nothing more than a projection. And so when you look at it through the camera's angle, it looks exactly like the beauty. Now, one of the things you will realize is that um, although you can see it on the beauty, you can see that it's it's a point position, which means it's a projection on points. So the quality, of course, of the position pass is not meant to be used in 2D. So in this case, you could change the point detail uh, and the point size. And if you do tweak that, you can get a better definition in your position pass. But it's not very important because not all, not a lot of times you are actually going to use uh, the position pass as an RGB element. Now, one thing I would like to let you know about the position pass is that, um, you know, although you do need it in the 3D system, you do not need it in the 2D system. So you should be aware that uh, most of the times you do want to switch off the 2D rendering of the position pass because it's extremely slow. Now, in the position pass, as you can see, you have the display, which is what you can see in the 3D system, and that you should leave on so that you see it. But then the render is what comes out of the scan line. And so you should turn off the render uh, to off so that it doesn't show up on the scan line render. Um, and then this time it will be much faster on your composite. 
So one of the most common applications of this technique using the position pass is to, for example, on this shot, which was a project I did last year for Rival Kingdoms, uh, I used this position pass uh, technique to actually put the fires uh, into the scene. If you want to see a bit more about this, you can always go and watch the video for Disconstructing the Rival Kingdoms project on my YouTube channel. Uh, the link is just on the screen right now. And so as you can see here, I do exactly the same technique using the normals and the position pass and using the points to, po to position um, and then using 2D elements of smoke elements, you know, particle elements and dust elements as uh, 3D cards uh, and then using the position pass to know where to layer them and to have them in the correct parallax. So as you can see here, when you look at the representation of the scene, then by knowing where the columns are, you can now easily put the fires on the correct places. Of course, in the next tutorials, I'm actually going to show you how to use exactly the same node to do some relighting so that you can actually effectively affect the CG with the elements that you're placing into the scene. And time is up. So next week, yet another, you just have to be better at something. Please subscribe, like, share, and leave me a comment. If you did not like this video, well, you can just leave. You know, there's just... Just leave. Thank you so much for watching.